money. Uh, we love it, don't we? We all want that little bit more. Maybe uh, it's to uh, buy tickets to your favorite sporting event or to go to a concert that you want to see. Um, we need money to buy the tickets. Maybe you just want to go down to the shops and buy some new clothes, or maybe you just want to go down and buy more lollies uh, and chocolate. I know a few people that like to do that. We, we love money. We want that little bit more, don't we? Maybe your ambitions are a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe you want lots of money to buy a massive mansion with a swimming pool out the back and an entertainment room with a, the big TV up in front of you to play your video games. Uh, maybe you want to go on a massive holiday around the world and take all your friends with you. Uh, maybe you want that four and a half million dollars for the Lamborghini Roadster, the, the most expensive sports car uh, in the world. Money, we, we love it. A lady uh, last year in Sydney won $107 million in the lottery. Imagine winning $107 million. What would you do with $107 million? You could have the holiday and the mansion and the Lamborghini and probably still have money left to go and get the lollies down at the shop. $107 million, so much money, isn't it? But you know what? Even $107 million is nothing uh, compared to Jeff Bozus, the, the richest man in the world. He has $113 billion. 113 billion, that's like winning that $107 million in the lottery every single week for 20 years. That's how much he is worth, how much money he has. What, what would you do with all that money? Have you ever wondered what God thinks about one person having that much money? Have you ever wondered what God thinks about the amount of money you have and, and what you should do with it or what you could do with it? Have you ever wondered how much money you need to navigate your way through life and, and how we can use it wisely? It reminds me of what Tim was talking about the other day about uh, wisdom and, and what wisdom is. What, what was it that Tim said again? But what actually is wisdom? If it's not just fortune cookie advice for us, what is wisdom? Well, wisdom is about skill in life. Wisdom looks at the world, observes how it works, and acts accordingly. Let me give you a couple of examples. I have learnt that when I open the freezer door, that I can't stand in front of the door to open it, otherwise it will hit my feet. Therefore, I stand back a little bit and open the door and I'm able to access uh, anything from in the freezer. That's example number one. Example number two, I have learned that when I'm cooking and preparing food, that certain foods go well together and certain foods don't. So for example, peas and carrots, go well together according to my wisdom and the wisdom of the makers of this, these canned peas and carrots. And according to my wisdom as well, I have learnt that soy sauce and rice go well together as well. Certain ingredients in cooking and in food preparation go well together and we use wisdom to determine what they are. That's the second example. There's general patterns to the way that things work. And the book of Proverbs helps us to see what those patterns are and to act accordingly. But of course, there's exceptions um, to the patterns. Generally speaking, things work a certain way, but sometimes things don't work the way that we expect. And Proverbs isn't naive to that either. So wisdom is skill in life. Wisdom looks at the world and observes how it works and it acts accordingly. Proverbs particularly brings us God's wisdom, God's observations on life and how the world acts. So what does God say about money in, in Proverbs? What do the Proverbs say about money? Well, three things, I think, uh, and we'll work through these. It tells us that money is good. Uh, it's a good thing, uh, but it's not the best thing. Uh, there's something that's better. Uh, and the third thing it tells us is that money uh, can be dangerous. We need to be cautious with it. And we're going to jump into those things now. 
So the first thing that it says is that money uh, is a good thing. We don't need to worry about having money if God's good enough to give it to us. Money is a good thing. And we see that in a couple of ways. Some Proverbs actually say money is a good thing. Uh, Proverbs 10.22, for example, says the blessings of the Lord brings, bring wealth uh, without painful toil for it. So uh, money and, and wealth is a good thing. But it also implies that money is a good thing by comparing it to other good things. I'm going to read. Proverbs 25, 11 and 12, so that says, Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a ruley rightly given. Like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold is the rebuke of a wise judge to a listening ear. Now that's talking about justice and how good justice is. Uh, but if money is a bad thing, that falls down. So money is a good thing uh, from God and we see it because it says it's a good thing and it compares it. Uh, to other good things. So money and wealth is a good thing. That's the first thing that Proverbs teaches us uh, about money. But money is not the best thing. That's the second thing we learn. It's good, but there is better stuff. And, and Proverbs make that clear as well. Look at uh, Proverbs three, thirteen with me. It says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she's more profitable than silver and yield better returns than gold. She's more precious than rubies. And nothing you desire can compare with her. So money's good, but wisdom is better. And we kind of know that, don't we? That money without wisdom isn't good. It's why we don't give a credit card to a three-year-old, for example. Uh, there's an episode in Peppa Pig. I don't know if you remember Peppa Pig, but uh, there's an episode in Peppa Pig where uh, they're playing shop at school and Rebecca Rabbit comes up and says, I have a hundred million dollars. What can I buy? Uh, and Peppa Pig doesn't say you can buy the house and the Lamborghini and the holiday. Peppa says you can, you can have one, rabbit, uh, one carrot and a flower pot. And she hands over $100 million and she, off she goes giggling. Everyone's happy. We, uh, money without wisdom isn't much good to us, is it? So money is good, but wisdom is better. There's a, a couple of other uh, proverbs that talk about it. It says, gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Money is good, uh, but money needs wisdom as well. Wisdom is better. And we'll see that in the third point, because the third thing we need to remember is that money can be dangerous. We need to treat it with caution. The reason that we need to treat money with caution, as Proverbs keeps telling us, is because we're so easily deceived into thinking that it's money that we need to get through life, to navigate through life. We're so tempted to think that it is money um, that we need to survive or to, to have the things that we want. And we, we trust money instead of God. It's so easy for us to trust money instead of God. And Proverbs tells us that we shouldn't, as does the Bible. Uh, there's a really good uh, proverb in, in chapter 18 uh, that I'm going to read. Uh, it says, The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified tower. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. A fortified city or a fortified tower, it's a safe place. It's where we go uh, when we need uh, help. Uh, and and Proverbs tells us we need to go to God. The, the name of the Lord is our fortified tower, but the wealth of the rich is their fortified city. Uh, we are so easily deceived uh, into thinking uh, that we need to trust money and not trust God uh, to get us through life. It's one of the many reasons why it's, it's dangerous for us. One of the real reasons why money can't be trusted, really can't be trusted, is that uh, it doesn't help us uh, on the day of judgment. I want to read another another. Proverbs 2. This is a really key one. Listen to this. Proverbs 11 verse 4. Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Wealth is worthless on the day of wrath. Uh, King Solomon was the man that wrote so many of these proverbs and he got it. Uh, he was a wealthy man. He had everything. He was the richest man in the world of his day, the $113 billion man. But he got it. You can't take it with you. Wealth is useless. When you stand before God, God's not interested in how much money you have. You can't buy your way into heaven. We're so tempted to think that money is what we need to get us through life. But it's not. We need to trust God. We need to make him our fortified city. So money is good. 
but it's not the best. We need wisdom. We need knowledge of God. Fear of the Lord is how Proverbs puts it. And we need to understand the dangers of money and our propensity, our, our, the ease with which we trust it instead of trusting God. So given all of that, how do we want to use our money, the money that God has given us? Well, I think whether it's words that we looked at last week or money this week or any of the other topics that we're going to look at, uh, wisdom starts with knowing God and applying that knowledge so that we act the way that God might act so other people can know God too. So with our words, we want to be kind and life-giving. With our money, the characteristic that keeps coming up in Proverbs is that we want to be generous. We know God is a generous God. We know from Ephesians that he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And so we want to be generous with the use of our money. I'll just read one proverb quickly. Proverb 22 verse 9 says, "Be uh, The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. The beginning of, the wis- of wisdom is fear of the Lord. It's knowing God. It's seeing the world the way he uses it, uh, sees it and using our gifts, using our money, acting in the way that he acts. There's one example of how we might use our money. You might want to talk about more in your small groups. But keep in mind, money is good. It is a good thing, but it's not the best. Wisdom is better and wisdom is needed in how we use our money. And be cautious. Be aware that we can be tempted to trust money and not God. I'll let you talk more about how we might apply that, but think about how we can be generous as well.